Hi everyone, I've been watching the planets lately and now Mars has come into the spotlight. Let's take a look at the red planet as well as some of the other planets are up in the night sky. I'm Pat Prokop and welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. The telescope I used was the Celestron 11-inch Edge HD, and uh, this is a fantastic telescope for planetary observation, and also for some deep space objects, but the F10 ratio is just perfect for observing the planets, and that's the main reason I bought this telescope, was to look at Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and the other planets as well. Now, the camera that I used was the Player One Uranus C camera. It's an IMX 585 uh, sensor on that camera and it is well designed for planetary recording. These dew straps are extremely important to help ward off the dew that would form on the lens of the camera and also on the lens of the guide scope. And so I have the, the camera on the back of the telescope and with this I was able to capture the planet. So let's go upstairs from last night and take a look at the observing and recording sessions. All right, I'm back in telescope one now, uh, and, uh, and it, it, it's showing that Mars is just clearing the, uh, the roof at the moment. So I'm gonna take a chance right now. And what I'm gonna do is go in, I got, I, I'm in orbitals right now, and I'm going to go uh, into framing. So I'm gonna click on the framing, and it's going to uh, uh, see where Mars is located with its right ascension declination and put the framing, and it's gonna be somewhere, well, it should be right there. Okay, so next thing I want to do is the old hard slew and setter. See what happens. So let's go over into image. And with the player one camera on there, it's a very tight field of view. So um, uh, plate solving is rather difficult with this. Uh, I can get away. There's Uranus, the last picture of Uranus. I can get away with, um, if I put a, a larger sensor camera on there, uh, such as the 71 uh, or a 294. Uh, well, there's Mars right down there. Uh, I can get pretty good plate solving, uh, but sometimes I can luck out with the player one. Uh, it, again, it's a much tighter field of view, much tighter, and which is great for planetary. But uh, let's see if it does. Uh, I might have to fine tune it. Uh, Mars is right there, so uh, it, it's trying to. It, it couldn't plate solve it itself because it's just too much light here and not enough stars here. And it looks like I got a little bit on soft on the focus as well. It's trying to do um, um, telescope.net, which it did, and it's going to try to correct it. Let's see if it does uh, the sampling. Look there. <laughs> It did a pretty good job. Check that out, Nina. Uh, using the orbitals and the framing and the plate solving, it went right straight to the target. So I'm very pleased about that. So now the next thing I'm gonna do is here I am in um, Nina. And um, let's, let's just do something over here. Let's, let's take a picture. And I got it at 100th of a second. You can still see it's still too bright, but uh, Let's take it down to a thousandth of a second. Mars is very bright, by the way, right now. And uh, let's take it down to a thousandth of a second. You know, still, it's it's overexposed. But that's you know, Nina is not designed for planetary, at least not yet. Maybe in the future, I don't know. But uh, planetary, you either want to use fire capture, but what I like to use is sharp cap because I own a, a license to sharp cap, and I like sharp cap and it does a fantastic job. So with that being said, let's go into sharp cap. Oh, I got to first go back into Nina and I got to close the camera here. So camera, equipment, um, camera. There it's in the um, uh, Uranus C, a player one camera. I want to disconnect that and disconnect camera. Okay, because you can't run the camera in two different programs. It's either one or the other, not both. All right, all right, minimizing Nina. Going into sharp cap, going into cameras, and there it is. Where there it is, right there. It's a IMX uh, 585 sensor, by the way. Um, that's a nice sensor. Great for planetary. Okay, there it is, right there. Um, all right, let's go into. It defaults to raw 18. Let's go into raw um, 16. 
that's the highest resolution you can get and then uh, uh, it's at 10 um, milliseconds right now but the gain is at zero so let's bring up the gain just a little bit and see what we get well I can already see some of the features on Mars all right there's Mars <laughs> it's not very big on the on the on the view it's a lot bigger than Uranus though uh, not nearly as big as what we saw with uh, Jupiter but one thing I like about sharp cap I think you could do it in fire capture as well but uh, in sharp cap what I can do uh, is I can go into a region of interest ROI and or capture area which they call it and let's take it right down to 320 by 240 that's a very small area there you can see that's the portion of the screen that it, it it's, it's looking at and it's disregarding all the other aspects of course the um, planet's not in this field of view yet so let's let's bring it over and there it is yeah moving your mouse well look at it. you can man that's not bad that's pretty good once I get it close and then I use these controls over here to uh, pan left and right and pan up and down and I us see bring it up just a little bit and bring it over just a little bit this way there now what I can do as well is I can um, zoom in let's go to 200% uh, and I can see if I'm out of focus or anything my camera's looking across the other way so uh, yeah it looks like I'm looking across the other way but I'm looking right at the image right now believe me um, there's the image and it's it's a touch out of focus do you think let's 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 play with the focus that I mean that looks pretty close um, and it's low on the horizon still it's only about 30 degrees let's see how high is it uh, I can go back to Nina even though the camera's not connected I can still uh, see uh, objects about it let's go into orbitals and uh, see right now it's only 34 degrees 35 degrees above the horizon so it's got a long way up to go it'll be uh, maximizing its elevation uh, at uh, one o'clock one o'clock in the morning what I try to do when I'm focusing on the planets is not so much looking at the um, uh, detailed information of part, across the uh, the planet itself I look at the edge around the planet see if I can get on that uh, smooth that out sometimes I like, like to even bring it up to three or four hundred percent let's try that and you see how it bounces over there now next thing I'm going to do I'm still not really happy about that but it's low in the sky so about an hour from now I should be able to get even a better picture um, go into well first of all uh, I had it on Jupiter uh, let's go to Mars just click on Mars and then go into capture start capture what I'm going to do is I have the um, the frame set at 10 milliseconds so I'm getting a lot of frames per second right now what am I getting 94 frames per second so I should be able I should be able to do a 5,000 frame movie fairly quick so uh, let's do that let's go for Mars okay all right so let's do it and here we go um, if you look in the lower right hand corner you can see um, the updates over here and there's also over here you can see what's going on so you know it, it's bouncing all over the place but in there there's some good frames and that's what sharp cap uh, not sharp cap uh, what um, uh, auto stackard and um, reggie stack uh, will filter out for me 4,000 4,500 and yeah 94 frames a second it doesn't take long to get a 5,000 frame movie but it, it probably within an hour or so when it gets above 50 degrees of, uh, above the horizon it will smooth out somewhat because it'd be less atmosphere uh, that I'll be looking through all right it's about an hour and a half later and Mars has just about reached 60 degrees in elevation uh, in my sky over here let's take a look at it uh, there it is right now and uh, it is just at 59 degrees above the horizon and it'll max out at 83 degrees later on tonight so let's um, take a, a look at sharp cap and there's Mars right there and I did turn turn the guider on and it's bouncing all over the place but it's holding it basically in the frame so I'm, I'm happy about that and uh, there you can see it's it's not 
as wiggly or, and bouncy as it was earlier, but it's still uh, fluttering around quite a bit right now um, as, it, as uh, I look through the atmosphere. I'm nearly at sea level. I'm only three meters above sea level. That's 18 feet or so, 18, 19 feet above sea level here. Uh, so I'm looking through a lot of atmosphere, but the atmosphere is fairly dry tonight, so that's a good sign. And the winds aloft aren't all that bad. And, uh, you know, it's stabilizing there right now. So um, here we go right here. Yeah, see, it did move. It was over here. All right. It, it rotates almost the same as the Earth, about 23 hours and 30 minutes or so, versus our just shy of 24 hours. Yeah, the, the exact rotation of the Earth, 23 hours, 56 minutes, 4.1 seconds, something like that. Okay. Auto stacker, do I have it open? No. Auto stacker. Load or open. Let's go to Mars 60D right there. There's the file. There it is right there. It looks pretty good just as it is. Let's do an analyze. I have the settings in SharpCap uh, set at planet and the Laplacian A for the um, uh, quality uh, estimator. Uh, it's a local. Uh, I just did the analyze, auto size. And over here, I'm taking 33% of the frames, which I probably couldn't get away with 50% in this case, but I, I like 33% of the frames. And I have um, these not checked off, the normalized stack or the sharpened, but I do have RGB aligned. And of course, save it to the folder. And I'm not going to drizzle it because I don't get much success with drizzling in um, uh, auto stackered. Okay, so uh, over here now in this panel, I need to set up a grid and I have it set, I, th I think it's for Mars, 48 points. So I'm going to place the grid there. And that's about right. Don't want to overkill it and don't want to underkill it. Uh, it looks pretty good. And let's let it rip. It's going to stack fairly quickly because it's a small uh, image. It's a 320 by 240 size um, file. As you can see, it's zipping right along here. Um, this is a fast computer, but it's not the fastest in the world. It's about 3 gigahertz. And just about done. Okay, it's done. Now, let's go over. We can close this up. All right, let's just close that. Go over into Registack. All right. And select. There's the one I had before. Let's do um, Mars 60D. And there's the 33% um, file. There's the original file. I'm going to load that into Registack right here. And let's uh, go full as big as we can. Look how blurry it is. You know, you can barely see the uh, the uh, polar cap here, but you, you can make out some of the features and so forth. But let's do some of the schemes that I had saved. And I believe this one here looks. Let's see what that one does. That in itself looks pretty good. But let's go over here to the RGB balance and just sit auto balance. And there you got it right there. Let's bring up the reds just a little bit. Okay, well, there you go. Now, I'm going to do all here. Right here, do all. And then I'm going to save it. And I'm going to just call it Mars 60D. Here's a review of the planets from last night. Saturn is now well past opposition, which was August 14th, when it was only, only 825 million miles away. Last night, it was at a distance more than 100 million miles further out at 941 million miles. And as you can see, it was much sharper when it was at opposition. Saturn is now fading into the southwestern evening sky and soon will be in the glare of the sun. So if you want to see Saturn, you better hurry up. Jupiter is also past its opposition date of September 26, when it was 368 million miles, or about 492 million kilometers out. Last night, it was 419 million miles away, but it's still in a position to get good images. I wasn't able to capture the giant red spot last night, but here it is 
when it was near opposition last September. Also, with Jupiter, it's fun to spot the Galilean moons. And last night, I was able to see all four of them. Yeah. So, Uranus, or Uranus, is way out there and is just past opposition, which occurred on November 9th. I did capture it when it was at opposition. And if you hold your head just right, if you, yeah, just right, you can actually see some of the banding in the atmosphere or let your imagination see it for you. It was a whopping 1.736 billion miles away last night. That's about 7 million miles further out than it was at opposition. You can see some of the moons around Uranus or Uranus if you overexpose the planet like I did last night. And there you can see some of the moons. Now, let's go to Mars. The red planet will reach opposition on December 8th and will be at a distance of about 51.153 million miles. However, last night, it was actually a bit closer at 50.651 million miles. Now, it'll be at its closest distance from the Earth on December 1st, and that being at 50.62 million miles away, or 81.147 million kilometers. Its magnitude last night was minus 1.79 and will be fiery red at opposition, shining at minus 1.85. By the way, Jupiter is shining at about minus 2.4 and Venus is uh, still in the glare of the sun, but its magnitude is about 3.8. Observers throughout most of the United States and all of Canada will be able to see an unusual event during the opposition of Mars. The moon will be full and it will occult Mars on that night of December 7th, early in the morning, December 8th, Eastern Time, United States. Now, the full moon will pass in front of the planet for several hours. Now, at my location here, it'll never occult the planet, but Mars will be skimming the rim of the moon. If the sky is clear, I might be able to see it. Well, if you like this video, please hit that like button below here. And if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. That helps my channel grow, and I really appreciate it very much. Hopefully soon, I'll be breaking through that 5,000 subscriber mark, and that, that's because of you, my viewers, which I'm very thankful for. Also, if you're planning to buy a telescope for a beginner, such as your son, daughter, nephew, niece, your spouse, or grandchildren, I posted a video on how to choose a beginner's telescope. And that video right over here uh, is on my other channel, Pat's Weather and Nature. So please check it out. And remember, the heavens are filled with majestic wonders and all in a sky near you. So unless you need rain, yeah, clear skies, everyone.